Hello English learners, this is Learn English with Brandon. In this video I am going to give you three tips on how to speak English like a native and the last tip is going to be the best tip that you have ever received. The first tip, now you've heard this before and it's watching movies. Yes, of course, we all like watching movies. But what's the best way to really watch these movies in English? Do we watch them with subtitles in our own language? Do we only watch them once? Do we watch them casually? This is something that seems to be a little bit confusing and I want to give you a method that should help improve your listening and speaking and memory retention abilities when using this method. Okay, when we find a movie that we really like and this is the first step. You need to find a movie that you really like. And this will work for whatever level you might be. But you need to find a movie that you really like because you are going to need to watch the movie several times. This can be a movie, this can be a television series, but I, I suggest that it is a movie or television series that tries to portray something in real life, something that is actually possible. So um, perhaps, you know, maybe uh, a series like Breaking Bad could be a little better than a movie like, you know, Stargate or something. Not that that's a bad movie by any means, but a movie that can apply to your day-to-day -day activities. Now, if you need to, the first time you watch this movie, of course, you can watch it with subtitles in your own language so you can get an idea of what's going on. But the second time, you need to switch to English subtitles. And I would suggest watching this movie or series episode several times until you've almost memorized the entire series, okay? Then, watch it without English subtitles so that you can recite with the movie or with the series as it plays. This is going to increase the amount of phrases that you know, it's going to increase your vocabulary, and it's going to improve your intonation, okay? This is a really good method. You can teach yourself English just by watching videos this way, okay? And you could also teach yourself the British accent this way. Now, let me move on to the second method. The second method I've uh, found to be a little bit more helpful for non-native speakers uh, with learning English. And this is particularly with listening to music, but not just any music. Okay, I'm not talking about the, the, the one hit uh, wonder by Justin Bieber or anything like this. I'm talking about music that specifically uses uh, language at a high level, at a poetic level, at a persuasive level. Um, so for some people this works really, really well, but for some people it, it doesn't because they don't particularly enjoy uh, this type of music. And that's understandable. That's okay. Now, I would recommend music that was composed, or, or at least the lyrics were composed by Cole Porter, um, Jerome Kern, uh, these, these writers of the 20s and 30s, this time period from the United States. Uh, and if you don't know, that this is the, the jazz time period. Jazz uh, was started in the, more or less in the early 1900s it started to expand in the 20s 30s and 40s and the 40s was its prime and then it kind of just kind of went down a little bit after the 40s i love jazz i'm a jazz musician myself um now i don't particularly listen to cole porter's songs that are sung by frank sinatra or ella fitzgerald or sarah vaughn uh, however these artists are excellent artists for learning the language and I will tell you why. The lyrics that are used in these songs are poetic, um, they have rhetoric, they give meaning, and they are enunciated incredibly well by, by whoever it might be, whether it's Tony, Tony Bennett, Frank Sinatra, um, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan, Billie Holiday. These people enunciate the words very well, and, and they carry what we would say today 
a level of class with their language and with, with their use of these words. So you can, you can memorize these songs and then you can sing these songs. Singing is incredibly beneficial and this is the main thing that makes it better than watching a movie is because when you sing, you have to try hard. Harder. Now, of course, we might be shy um, to sing in public or elsewhere. Some of us aren't, um, but there are many places that we can sing in our in our private. Um, however, if you are comfortable with singing in public in front of people you don't know as you're walking down the street, just keep in mind that this will increase your confidence tremendously, and the value in that. Is, is something that really can't be taught. That's something that really can't be taught in a classroom. But this is a valuable tool in order for you to help increase your confidence, your pronunciation, and your conviction within this language. Okay? So the second one was thongs, songs. Now the third, the third method, which is what I would argue is the best method to learn any language is to find recordings of speeches made by the most influential speakers in that language. Memorize those speeches and then record yourself reciting those speeches and then compare yourself with headphones to the original recording of the speaker who gave that. Now, we have many influential speakers in English. Uh, we have Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, Winston Churchill. We have many, many influential speakers. John Lennon, whoever it might be. But you can, f if, if you listen to a few of these speeches and you remember these speeches, you will learn how this language is meaningful. You will learn the rhetoric in this language, you will learn what has appealed to the masses throughout history. And you can take the message that they gave with you wherever you go, and you can replay this message in your mind as you go out your day-to-day -day business. When you do this, you not only practice the phrases and practice the intonation that you've learned from these speeches, but you actually will get the meaning from these. And the meaning is what we say in English is evergreen. Evergreen is something that never loses its value. Okay? Now, some of the rhetoric that John Lennon told us, that Martin Luther King told us, they didn't necessarily create that themselves, but they articulated it in a particular way that was new at that time, which made it stick. And this is something that will expose you to the culture of these people, the English-speaking culture, and it is the most valuable language. It was, it was language that was given to a large group of people at one time, and these people embraced this message so much that over 60 years, these, or, or longer, these words are still valuable today. So if you can memorize speeches, and you can record yourself giving these speeches, yes, you can take out your cell phone, record it into a voice recording application, and then listen to yourself, you will be able to hear exactly what you sound like. And this is what we say, this is the truth in language, or in music if you're recording yourself playing an instrument. This is the truth, because we can't actually hear what we sound like. When I speak to you right now, the sound is causing vibration in my skull, the sound is exiting my mouth, bouncing off of the walls, and coming back to my ears. So it is physiologically impossible to actually hear myself the way that you hear myself, the way that you hear me. Thank you. So, this is the best way to, to practice your pronunciation and to become a really good English speaker and to sound like a native speaker. I hope you found these tips helpful. Please comment below if you have any questions. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.